Doing It with Brian and Darla. Hello, I'm Brian Tipster. And I'm Darla Nez Tipster, daughter of Bob Nez of Bob Nez and the Nezvians. Welcome to our show where we share with you our handy life hacks and helpful tips. Whether you're watching us do it or you're doing it along with us, we promise that life is just better when you're doing, doing it, it with, with Brian, Brian and, and Darla. Darla. Last episode, we showed you how to light a barbecue and cut your own bangs. Today, it's all about how to throw a dinner party. If you've had two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, twenty people over at the same time. Brian, that's sure a lot of people in one place. What is this, a mosh pit? You know how difficult it is to keep things lively and stay within a budget. Here are some rapid fire hacks that are designed to help you throw a great dinner, dinner party. party. <laughs> rapid fire hacks. When we're having guests over, Brian makes me hide our money in a tampon box. Trust is earned. And why not place an out of order sign on the toilet? Guests will drink less when they see there's nowhere to relieve themselves. Sometimes an unsightly hole in a man's shirt can ruin an entire dinner party. Not to worry, Brian. A little skin paint and no one's the wiser. Looks like new. Always forgetting to thank your guests after a dinner party? Keep a box of pre-written, vague, but seemingly personal thank you cards. This one says, thank you for coming to our dinner party, still thinking about that funny slash moving thing you said or did. Darla and Brian. And this one says, go fuck yourself. Guess we're planning on not having a very good time. The main hack. When throwing dinner parties, nothing says we know what we're doing more than getting the conversation going. And ever since the fire, we don't like to leave anything up to chance. That's why we've created clever icebreakers for our dinner table. Darla's right. Here are some things you'll need. Okay, let's get this dinner party started. On the back of name cards, we've written clever questions to get things going. For instance... Who here has seen a dead body? I have, when I was a person of interest that time. Hmm. How many cousins have you kissed? <laughs> Six. See, these icebreakers can work as whole conversation starters. Like, any interesting diagnoses lately? I've had cancer of the liver. What's for dinner? Liver! Make sure you avoid some of those sensitive areas of discussion. And if you don't know what those are, you can always turn to the internet. Sensitive areas. Oh my god! Oh god! What does that keep happening? I don't to us? know! Go Why by is it's the gross! Safe search not working? Well, I didn't do I it if that's say what you you're did, saying! God. Say goodbye to awkward moments at dinner parties by wearing interesting conversation pieces. Why, Darla, I love those earrings you're wearing. Thank you, Shirley, our neighbor. They're gum. Fabulous. Well, that must be our guests now. Well, now that your dinner table is set and your icebreakers are a go, it's time to host your guests. All we have to do now is take the food out of the oven. Shit. Well, since we aren't in fact having a dinner party, we have some time to answer your emails. Night Stockings writes, you two seem to really like each other. Any tips for keeping a relationship spicy? Well, that sounds like an entire episode there. But you can pick up our self-published book entitled, Doing It, Sex, with Brian and Darla. Well, thank you for watching this episode. Please join us again next time when we show you how to hotwire a car using a pipe cleaner and a set of car keys. Oh, please go to our website here and order your I Heart Doing It t-shirts. And to the young people out there, have you ever seen your parents doing it? You can doing it too. The views and opinions in this episode do not reflect the views of the CBC or the National Theatre of the World or anyone